Hey, I'd like to show you the spiral vase project today, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Now, unlike regular 3D printing, which stacks a layer, a layer, and a layer, what's interesting about this is it doesn't make discrete drawings stop, move up, and then make another one on top of it of a drawing of plastic and fuse them together. Well, it does that for the very bottom, but for the rest of it, as it goes up, it makes these containers, which are really useful. You can put like pencils, pens, even flowers and things like that in them. And what it does is really cool is it goes, and as it extrudes up, there's no seam or stop and starting point because it just keeps making the shape and goes up higher and higher until it gets to the stop or the top where it actually quits doing it. Okay, so these are really interesting and they make some really cool and, and useful prints. You can see this one here I used to, to hold my pens and pencils. Here's one that my student made, which was very simple, but you notice how he sliced it with very big, granular, giant triangles. It turned out really neat, very interesting. Here's a smaller version of the other one I just showed you. And then this one is the one we're going to be using as the example in this video, which is the pie shape. Now, all of these files that I'm using in this video, if you're um, in my class, I'll show you where those are, obviously. It's in my folder. And if you're on the uh, internet and you need to download them, you look in the description. There'll be a link to a zip file, and you can download those, unzip them, and then get those going. Uh, after you do that, what you're going to need to do, if you're in my class, it's already installed, forget about it. Everybody else is going to need to download OpenSCAD. Okay, so you're going to need to download OpenSCAD and install that. Let me show you that. So you're going to start off by either Googling it or just type in OpenSCAD, Open S C A D, and that stands for Open Solid CAD. Dot org. And then you're going to go down here, and if you have Windows, you probably want to just download this version. But um, if you want to pick a version, you can go in here, and there's a 64 bit window, 32 bit, there's Mac OS, as well as a lot of um, uh, you know, BSD and uh, Linux distribution uh, files. So once you've got that installed, we'll go on to the next phase. You're going to need to go online and find some millimeter grid paper. If you're in my class, of course, you'll get a, uh, a worksheet that looks kind of something like this. Okay, so millimeter grid paper, if you're on the uh, you're doing this on YouTube, you're going to want to do this. And you can do it for free, but you'll need a printer to print it out. It might help you, you know, not, not a 3D printer, but a 2D printer, just on paper. So. If you just search for millimeter grid paper, you might be able to find some on there. There's a ton of different options, and I'll let you find something like that. Or maybe you already have grid paper. It should be fine. Another option is if you have bigger grid paper, you can just label it 10, 20, 30, 40, and do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this one is I've already done this. So listen, here's what you need to know. So see, this is one example that would work. But before we get into this, let's show you on the camera some examples of what would work and wouldn't work. Remember how I was talking about how it's a continuous extrusion? What that means is, 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 is it makes it really smooth. But the problem is, is you can't do one profile and then another one inside of it. Because then it would have to stop, go to the inside, redo that, and there would be a seam in the print. The whole point of this is to make something that's a smooth design that looks really cool. So this would be an example of one that works great. You start here, you go around once, and it goes around. There's only one profile, and it's a closed profile. Another example of one for this project that would work awesome. Okay. And then finally, let's look at two of them that would not work. Here I have the letter A. The outside would be fine, but it won't, you won't be able to do the inside part of it. But I think most people would see this, and they might say, hey, that's the letter A, even if you didn't have that in there. Maybe it would still work. So you could try omitting certain things from the inside to simplify it. Since we're going to be using coordinates and points, now if you're a pro at OpenSCAD, you could probably get around this, but I don't want you to use another thing. You don't, I don't want you to use arcs. Arcs or curves are no good for this. We're only going to use, to make it simple for beginners, points and connect the dots. Now if you have an arc, you can actually simulate it by connecting dots along the arc too. And so to if you look at it kind of zoomed out, it, it might still look like a curve and, and work just fine. For this example that you see here, I am done with this and I'm ready to put it in SCAD. Let me show you what you need to do. You're going to put down dots to make your design and pattern. If you're really stuck, try some rotational symmetry. It makes them look really cool. Like this one uses rotational symmetry at 90 degrees. Or, uh, you know, the same thing with this one. That it, it's almost a guaranteed way you can just put down a few points and then copy them and rotate them and it's going to look good. But anyways, 
So what I've done is I've labeled them. I've, I've labeled the start clearly, and I've, I've labeled, so this is over 30 millimeters and up 40. By the way, I've limited mine to 100 by 100, or negative 50 to positive 50. And that's because my printer for my students, I can't print them any bigger than that. I'd never get done with them. They'd be too long of prints. So I've limited the size. You're going to want to limit your size to what your printer can do and how much time you want to spend printing it. So negative 30, 40, 0, 20, 30, 40 and zero negative 40. Now, the mistakes people commonly make with this is they'll put the x and y coordinates backwards. That's no good for this project. You've got to do it right. The other mistake is, is they'll go over 30 to the left, and they'll call it positive 30 instead of negative 30, which it should be. So flipping those positives and negatives, that can be a problem also. OK, let's assume you've done that. Then you're going to transfer these points in order. You can see my arrows, which show you what the order is. You don't have to write those on yours, of course. Uh, and I tried to put these, but I didn't have room. So I just wrote them down here in a list in order. And you don't need, the, even though this one goes back to this, you don't need to put this twice, at the, once at the beginning and end. Just once is fine, OK? So at this point, you should have OpenSCAD installed. And what you're going to do, and if you're in my class, here's where you find the files. And you guys will have the same folder, but it zipped up. And by the way, I put, it, I put some of the grid paper in there, too, I just noticed. So the grid paper is right here, grid paper for flat plan. So if you're on the internet, you could just print that instead of searching for it, perhaps. OK, so if you look here, what we have is we have a whole bunch of examples of files. Now, for you guys to learn from, I'm going to open up the 2D points only one. If you're just going to do the project, open up the 3D points. And so, But I'm going to open up this one first, the 2D points for pi. So now that I have that open, I wanted to talk to you about how we do it. First step is we program in the flat pattern that we have on our grid paper. Then later, we will extrude it up with the linear underscore extrude command, OK? So the next thing that you, what we're going to want to do, so if you take a look here, you can see what I've done is I, and for this pi design, I've just entered these points in the polygon. So the polygon command makes a, well, complex polygons. And, and this is specifying that, hey, these are points. Now, one thing you need to know is this polygon command starts here. All this stuff is points inside of it, and then it ends down here. So like, for example, this one matches up with this one. And this guy here matches up with this one. And then everything in between are those coordinate points, and they are comma delineated. It's kind of a fancy term for there's a comma to tell where one ends and one begins. Because if we just put them together, the computer can't interpret that properly. Remember, for this first project, what you're going to do is actually not create your own file. You're going to download mine and hack it. That's the best way to learn how to program in any system. And OpenSCAD SCAD is known as the programmer's CAD program. So the best way to learn programming is to hack someone else's code. Let's go over and close this and go to the 3D design. Now what you see is you see the same thing that we had before, all this stuff, but now I've encased it inside of this all the way down to here, so this matches with this. And inside of that, I've put the flat polygon. And the linear extrude is what takes that flat polygon and pulls it up into three-dimensional space. And then how tall is it going to be? How much is it going to twist? How many of these little slices of these triangles are you going to see? That's all included right here, height, twist, and slices. OK. So when you open up this file, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to File, Save As, so that you don't write over the original. And you know you can put it in your documents. That's what I would do. And you're going to name it Twisted Vase, and then you know whatever your name is. So Woodchick for me, OK? And then I'm going to save that file right there. Now I'm working on this one, and I modify it. I'm not going to destroy the original or do anything like that. OK, so the next thing is, is that you're going to delete. So for, now for my little humble design, which I hope you do something cooler than this. Mine's just small, four points, because I want to get done with it quick. So you don't have to watch me do all the drudge work of it. So what you're going to do is I'm going to take these points that I have here, and I'm going to program them and, and modify this. Now here's the deal. For this part, let's zoom out a bit. For this part, you don't need all of these. Like the pie has a lot of points. I only need four. So I'm going to delete everything except for one, two, three, the last four, and press the delete key. Then I'm going to go and change these to my numbers. OK, so my first coordinate is negative 30. Remember from right down here and here, negative 30, 40. The next one I have to do, 0, 20. After that, whoops. 
careful that you don't destroy those commas like I just did because it won't work and you'll have syntax errors if you don't do this very carefully. So you're just basically using my code and you have my permission to do it. It's open source, of course. And um, you, can, you can change this and use it however you want. I don't care how you use it, it's fine with me. So now what you notice is, is I changed a lot of stuff there, but nothing happened. In OpenSCAD, they don't change it every time you type because it would constantly be re-rendering. So you have to press the, at the top of the keyboard, there's these special keys. You have to press the F5, and then later, when we export it, F6, okay? F5 and F6 at the top of the keyboard. So F5 will re-render it, and there's my shape. Now let's go ahead, and, and the next thing you can do is you can play around with how tall you want it by changing this variable. Let's say I want a candy dish. That doesn't need to be very tall. 50 millimeters, about 2 inches, F5. If you want to play around with how much it gets twisted, be careful with this because you can see the angle on this, this edge when we twist it quite a bit. It gets to be very sharp and your printer might have trouble with printing the overhang. But let's ignore that for now and just go up to the top and let's play around with this. 45 degrees, F5 to re-render. See it changed a little bit. Let's go to negative 45. It twists the opposite direction. Okay, so let's say for this one, I want to go a height of 100, full height, and ooh, I got an error because I forgot to put in the twist, and a twist of, let's say, negative 50. That looks pretty cool. And slices, what does that do? See these triangles that are stacked up here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you double it, it gets up to 20. That's because I have 20 slices. And it's not necessarily better. If you want it super smooth, Put in a number like 100 and press F5. You'll get something that's very smooth. If you want it to be more rough so you can see the triangles, like on this one, which looks really cool, I think, then you're going to go with, let's say, something smaller, like 8. Boy, I like that. I like the way that looks. I think it looks cool. So I'm going to go with this option here. Now I'm done, we're going to go ahead and save it because we've already saved it once, and I'm going to save the changes I made. By the way, OpenSCAD is an old school type of programmer. program. It won't ask you to, to save, it, or it may not ask you always to save before you exit. If you don't have it installed, it may not. So um, just be careful with that. File, and then you're going to go to, now wait a minute. If I go to file and export right now, look what happens. It gets an error down here. Nothing to export. Try building first. Press F6. F5 is a quick preview. F6 is good enough to export for 3D printing, and that's what we need to do now. F6. And I'm going to go to File now, and now export it as STL. And then you're going to tell it where you want to save. If you're at home, you save it wherever you want to. If you're at my class, you're going to go to JA Woodchick. And you're going to go to the Turn In folder. And you're going to go down to whatever period you're in. Let's pretend you're in uh, first or third period or second period, let's say. And then I'll have one in here, twisted vase, and you can put it in here. And you write, and, and then you just go, okay, fine, and save. And if you're at home, you can save it to wherever you want, okay? Now, the kids in my class don't have to do the slicing of this. So I'll make another video later that shows you how to do this if you're doing it at home and how to set up, um, I'm going to use Kira as an example, and how to set it up to do this special type of spiral vase print because it's a completely different way of slicing. Hey, I hope this works for you. And before we go, though, I really need to show you how to fix errors because a lot of you are going to have errors on your graphing or the way you put your points in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a major mistake here and change this to negative 40. And then that breaks my design completely. Doesn't look right anymore. Here's what you do. Go to the linear extrude command and comment it out by putting slash slash. And go down here. Remember, this is part of the linear extrude command. And you're going to put a slash slash here and press F5. It'll go back to where it was as a flat pattern so you can easily fix it and tell what you did wrong. Okay, well, you can see very clearly, if we look at my drawing here side by side, you can see that, uh, let's take a look at our points. And let's get it go to view and go to top view. Okay, well this one looks right, this one looks right, and this one looks right. You can tell very clearly this one is not where it's supposed to be. So I look here and I double check. Did I go over it? Negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, 10, 20, 30, 40. Oh, it's supposed to be positive 40, not negative, so we fix it. Okay, F5, it looks good flat. Then you delete your comments, which is forward slash, forward slash delete that and then press F5. Okay, now it's good. Now press F6 and you can render it. You can go to file and export it. That should fix any problems you have with your with your files. Hey, thanks for watching and I hope that you guys do something awesome. If you made something cool, 
put a comment or uh, down there below with maybe a link to where people could could check it out. Hey, thanks.